Hey coaches, what's going on? It is Coach Tim here with another video and I have a really good one for you today. I'm gonna talk to you about how to run a successful youth football program your very first year of coaching. And I have a lot of experience on this because um, I had a very successful first year when I coached back in the day and I'm gonna tell you exactly what I did and what you can do to um, be successful. All right, guys, so before I get into this video, do me a solid like and subscribe to my channel, guys. And as my gift to you, you can download my free Beast Formation playbook that's going to be down in the description box below. All right, guys, so let's let's get to this. So I'm going to start by giving you a quick story. You know, I, I started off head coaching a youth football team at the age of 20 years old and, you know, I had just um, got out of the Air Force and I wanted to do something. I needed to do something because I went to basic training in the Air Force and I got sick, had a health issue. And, you know, I was basically depressed. I was depressed and I knew that I needed to uh, get out the house, you know, and and do something. So I decided that I wanted to start a youth football team because I played, you know, football throughout um, my youth, you know, all the way up until, you know, after my high school year. So, um, I just wanted to do something to kind of get out of my rut, get out of my depression I was dealing with. Cause I really wanted to be an airman in the air force and, uh, it just didn't work out. So, so I had to make a pivot. Right. Um, and before I, before I go any further, guys, look at my lake. So this is the lake. We've been having a lot of rain. And so I got a little flooding in the yard right here. So, I'm just out here right now assessing everything and I decided to make this video. But uh, but anyway, guys, so I decided to start this youth football team in my local um, community. And at the time, my um, nephew, my two of my nephews actually, and their best friend was outside always playing, you know, backyard football, things of that nature. And so I told them, hey, look, I want to start a, a football team. Would you guys want to play? At this time, they was um, they all were ten years old. All right, and they was like, yeah, you know. And I start, I literally started practicing with them the next day, um, and it was only four kids out there at the time, right? So I was practicing with these kids for, I want to say about a month before I started to get other kids coming out there. Now, mind you, I didn't have a clue at the time what I was doing in terms of forming a team. Um, you know, I was just winging it I, and, and we was just practicing. And then I find, you know, and then, uh, you know, I had to find out what league we was even going to play in. Right. So that that's my first tip is that when you're starting a youth football program, Make sure you know all the Little League programs in your area. Um, like in this area, there's two primary youth football programs. And then there's about, uh, I want to say about three more travel regional youth football programs in the area. So um, always find out what, what kind of league you want to compete in. Do you want to compete in a rec league? Do you want to compete in a travel, um, you know, league? Um, you know, do you want to uh, compete in a national youth football, you know, league? Um, for me, I've always, I'm going to be honest with you guys, on the youth football level, I always liked rec football. I always enjoyed rec football for the simple fact that you're able to really develop a lot of kids who may not um, be talented, you know. And I'm a developmental coach, so I like to develop kids and really see the progression and, um, you know, in these rec leagues, you tend to have, you know, you still able to get a lot of good, talented players. You know, you can't run out of talent with a lot of these kids um, if you're doing what you're supposed to do to attract them. So um, anyway, guys, I started this youth um, team. I, I joined the local um, rec program, rec league, which was actually a very competitive league here in Tuscaloosa. And uh all we had to do now was train and practice for six weeks into our first game. That was going to be uh, the first week in September, right? So let me, let's, let me talk about some mistakes that I made. And, and I don't want you to make these mistakes starting off, you know, with your youth football program. You know, number one, you want to be, 
You want to build relationships with kids. You want to build relationships with their parents. Um, and you want to start early. The big, the biggest mistake I had is I just winged it. I just said, oh, I want to, you know, it was, it was like, uh, I think July. And I said, oh, okay, I want to start a youth football team. Have a plan in place, okay? I didn't have a plan. I started winging it. Have a have a plan in place how you're going to construct your team, how you're going to, you know, what's your colors, what's your brand, um, what 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 are your values as a coach? That's important. Your values are going to determine who you attract into your program. OK, you know, for me and my program, my values are always built on um, character building, leadership development, and it's also built built on um, athletic at, um um, excellence when it comes down to athleticism and just training athletes. We, we all, we take pride in excellence and, you know, a new value that, that I added to my program is that, you know, we want to play professional. We want to be professional. We want to be a professional athletes. And let me tell you what I mean by that. We want our kids to be disciplined. We want our kids to have great sportsmanship we don't want our kids to have, you know, a lot of problems. And when we do have problems, you know, in terms of behavior and things of that nature, I will shut that crap down. You know, I will shut it down in a heartbeat. So, um, you know, know what your values are. Know just kind of what you want to do, because I'm telling you, and I'm saying this based on experience. You don't want to just try to get, recruit kids and recruit parents just because you need numbers, okay? Because you can recruit some toxic people into your program. And unfortunately, when you recruit toxic parents, there's a chance that you're going to recruit some very toxic kids and they can really sabotage your program if you're you're not careful. So be very intentional. Be very intentional about where you want this team to play at. Where do you want... Um, you know, who, what type of kids you want to attract, what type of parents you want to attract. Okay. All right. Here's number three guys. And this is a mistake I made. You know, I started coaching and it was just me starting off. It was me. And then while the season was going on, I started, I recruited my brother cause he, I, one of my brothers is all state running back. And so I, rec you know, asked him if he could help and all of that good stuff. Um, again, the mistake I made with that was I was winging it and I was just asking, hey, you know, can you help me? Can you help me? But it was no serious structure in what I wanted to, you know, wanted to accomplish. Even though we didn't have um, a major problem, um, we did run into some issues on the back end of the season. And I'm going to tell you, I'll share that with you in one minute. But you want to make sure that you got coaches that respect you respect your systems your process your playbook um that's a big one you know like if you're running a a, a very um traditional playbook i'll put it like that like for me um or let's say unorthodox let's put it like that you know for me i was running the maryland eye formation uh, my first year i ran a two by one single back formation um and i had an eye formation um just like a regular I formation there as well. And so there were issues um, down the line. And, you know, it, it's crazy because I actually had a very successful first year. Um, team was six and two on the season. We made it to the championship game. We lost our championship game um, 13 to uh, six um, in a heartbreaker, total heartbreaker. But this this is where, what I'm talking about when I say you got to know who you're choosing to help you coach, okay? You know, um, during the playoffs, I had to go to Connecticut, the University of Connecticut, to um, do a speech. And so I couldn't actually uh, coach the in the semifinals. I let my assistant coach coach the semifinals, and they won, you know. And I was comfortable with letting him coach because the team that we played, we knew that we had way more talent, and we beat them twice already that year, um, you know, in forfeit. So... I was comfortable and confident in knowing that my assistant coach could handle it. Well, the mistake that I made was, you know, after the fact in the championship game, um, my assistant coach still thought that he had play calling powers, uh, you know, over me. And so um, at that time, I listened to the plays that he said. And so 
instead of me, usually my style of coaching guys is that I'm trying to test the waters. If you guys been following me, you kind of know how I am with that. Um, I test the waters. I'm going to, you know, do some more, some plays to where I'm finding the weakness. Well, in a championship game, the mistake I made was I was running my best plays first. I was running my best plays first. And that's a, that's a, a, a mistake I feel like I made at that time. Um, I know I made it at that time because I'm way more experienced 14 years later, right, head coaching. But uh, I ended up running my best plays. And then as the game went on, you know, the team we played was a very good defensive team, and they just got stiff on us. And it was just hard to uh, score points um, after that because the place that we usually use to set up teams for big, you know, for big scores, it just didn't work anymore because we ran our best plays at the beginning which was a huge mistake. So, so guys, I'm, you know, I'm probably going to make another uh, part to this video. Um, but when you're starting off your program, the number one thing you want to do is to have a great plan in place. Okay. You want to make sure that you know what, what neighborhood you're looking for what type of kids you're looking for. Make sure it's in alignment. A lot of coaches make the mistake of not having a vision that's really in alignment. You know, if, for example, if you, let's just say, let's just use, let, let me just go through this with you real quick. If you stay out in the country, right, in rural America, but you want to recruit suburban kids or city kids, like you got to make you good luck. Okay. Right. You can do that. But if you stay out in the country and you want to want to recruit suburban kids, start your team in the suburbs or near the suburbs. If you want to get city kids, okay. Start your team in, in near the city area. Okay. Don't, don't make it harder than what it has to be on the parents, especially or and on yourself by trying to go 40 miles out the way, an hour out the way to recruit kids, just because those are the kind of kids you want, you know? Be very intentional about, you know, assessing the neighborhoods in your area, you know? Um, and, and it's crazy because I'm telling you, these are mistakes I made. You know, I've coached an hour away. And then, then when I got to the town that I'm coaching, I had to put kids on the back of my truck, my Tundra, you know, I got 10 kids on the back of my Tundra. They stay five, 10 minutes away from the practice field. But because their parents, you know, don't value the sport or just unenthused, I was doing too many things and I was breaking my back in the process and losing a lot of money in the process. You know, I know a lot of us don't do it for the money. We do it for the love of the kids and the love of the game. Um, but don't be like how I was early in my, my career, my coaching career, where I was breaking my back trying to have a team when I should have just started the team closer to my house, you know, I should have had the team just closer to my house. And, and I had, and, and this is, this is another tip guys and, and have strong rules for your parents. Let your parents know if your kid ain't at practice, they don't play and they are responsible for bringing their kids to practice, you know? And I understand that some, some parents can't, um, bring their kids to practice because they may work or something. But if they're, if, if you pick them kids up for practice and the parents on the porch, just, just chilling, you know, barbecuing, partying and all of that, that's just unacceptable, you know? And, and if parents, you know, say, Oh, well, I can't afford for little Jenny to play football. Well, sometimes you just, little Jenny just won't be able to play guys. I've spent well over 45, $50,000 in youth football, just, just, by trying to get equipment, helmets, registration fees, um, you know, gear for kids to play. And, you know, half of that gear is still, the parents still keep the gear at the end of the season. You don't want to make them mistakes, guys. You don't want to make them mistakes. So you want to have very strong policies, rules, and plans in play. Um, so, you know, you can really have a strong program that's not breaking your back and straining, you know, your family, um, your family's back. And, um, I'm gonna stop right there, guys. I, I didn't want to, I didn't want to bore you too much with this stuff, but, um, 
just know too, guys, if, if you're you wanting to start a football team this year or you know that, you know, things are just kind of out of alignment with your program, you may be a seasoned coach and things are just out of alignment, um, feel free to reach out to me in the description area. Um, I have a, a application. If you want to work with me and, you know, you need just, you know, an extra person to help you get your program where it needs to be and to just kind of assess your program and see what you can do to really make it top notch, a golden standard, um, go in the description box and fill out the application. I love to work with you. Um, see if we are good fit to work together. I'd be more than happy to do that. Um, but what you don't want to do is you don't want to start a program out of alignment. You don't want to start a program where you're spending thousands of dollars, your wife mad at you, your kids mad at you because you are spending more time with the, the with with your players and not because of football, but because you got to go and pick them up and you got to feed them and you got to you got to talk to the parents. And you got to do this, do that, do that, you know, um, you want you can still be a hero and help a lot of kids in need. I do it every year. You can still be a hero and help uh, kids in need without straining your family, your personal life, because um, that's when you know it's it, it's it's not fun anymore, and that's when you begin to burn out real fast as a coach. All right. So, guys, I hope you liked this video. If you did, hit that like button. Hit the notification bell for more videos. I may make a part two to this. Um, if you want me to make a part two of this, hit that like button. If I get over 100 likes, I will make a, a part two to this. If I get over 100 likes, I make a part two. Again, if you want to work with me, go down in the description box, the second link. Just fill out that quick application. Shouldn't take you no more than two minutes. Um, and also, don't forget to download the free Beast Formation Playbook. All right, guys, this is Coach Tim. Remember, win more, score more, and beast out more. All right, guys, till next time. Peace.